This cornfield was treated with herbicides containing glyphosate, a very efficient weed killer. This field was not treated. Currently in Europe, manufacturers of glyphosate are preparing for another battle. They have asked to have their European internal market license renewed. Initially, the European Commission proposed 15 years for sale, but EU states have only agreed on interim solutions. Well, it looks impressive, a field not sprayed with glyphosate and it's a sheer riot of colour. Michael Rubin makes a living raising goats. Neighbouring farmers have used glyphosate on their fields. On a windy day, sprayed weed killer can land on his farm. Have a look yourself. This is my hay field, some 16 to 17 hectares. It's surrounded by cornfields treated with herbicides. Ruben's farm produces meat, milk and cheese and even goat ice cream. The business had a good start 18 years ago. However, when the euro was introduced, benefits halved. Ruben and his goats survived, but then came the glyphosate cloud, allegedly killing 34 goats. It happened shortly before the rapeseed colza harvest. In our region, the colza is sprayed to death. My animals were harmed because at the very moment the colza was treated with glyphosate, they were exposed to the toxic mist. They got cramps, they got diarrhea, they died within days. Berlin is a battleground again. While centre-right parties are in favour of glyphosate, centre-left-wing parties oppose a renewal of the European glyphosate licence. The International Agency for Research on Cancer classified glyphosate as probably carcinogenic to humans. We met a spokesperson from producer Monsanto. There's a negative campaign against glyphosate. The European Food Safety Authority issued a positive security assessment. Based on that, no other decision can be taken but a renewal of the glyphosate license for the EU market. And I'm confident in the end this will happen. We move to the southern German region of Bavaria, governed by the conservative CSU party. Weed killers containing glyphosate are not just used in agriculture, but also in parks and for private gardening. Well, glyphosate, such as Roundup and other brands, is sold almost everywhere. You can buy it without difficulty. Some 5,500 tons of glyphosate are sold in Germany each year. 40% of German fields are treated with the weed killer, from where it moves into water and the food chain. Karl Bauer works for the Munich Environmental Institute. He proved the presence of glyphosate in the most popular beer brands. I have some precise doubts. I suspect the European Commission will make arrangements with the producers in order to push through the reapproval of glyphosate. There is a problem. The studies handed over by the producers to the European institutions are treated like business secrets. It's not those protesting noisily who lack credibility. The lack of credibility is elsewhere. Those researchers getting money from people producing this stuff to be decided on, they lack credibility. In Berlin, we have an appointment with Vice President of the Institute for Risk Assessment, an agency financed by the government and stressing its scientific independence. After having issued a pro-glyphosate opinion, managers received death threats from people against the use of the herbicide. Assessing the validity of the studies, the institute acts as a referee. The European Food Safety Authority based their glyphosate-friendly recommendation on the Berlin findings. Glyphosate in mother's milk, for instance, or glyphosate in beer, they're not specific scientific studies. They are not matching the required quality levels. This blame also goes for those studies pretending malformation and so on. From a scientific viewpoint, they're not valid. Every substance has to be used in an appropriate way. When you drink your hair shampoo, this would not be an appropriate use, and you would not feel well afterwards. Off camera, scientists working for the Risk Assessment Institute accuse glyphosate opponents of Facebook science. One has to drink 1,000 litres of beer a day to reach the maximum glyphosate threshold. 
I don't want to stoke fears. I accuse the German Federal Institute for Risk Assessment of smart PR spin doctoring. This 1,000 litre argument seems to hold up because this institute excludes all scientific evidence that glyphosate could trigger cancer and that it's an endocrine disruptor. But we are talking about a substance that probably causes cancer. European law says that carcinogenic substances have to be minimalized. The scientific community is split. So are the politicians. Several times, EU member states postpone decision-making on the topic. Governments are getting nervous about a public opinion moving towards glyphosate-critical viewpoints. Once you start digging into this story, you'll get a kind of feeling that all this is not just about science, but about politics. So let's have a talk with the politicians. We meet Harold Ebner, German MP and Green Party member. He says the Government Institute for Risk Assessment is turning a blind eye on studies proving the cancer risk. In their report, the German Federal Institute for Risk Assessment mentions 1,200 studies that had to be assessed, but they admitted having copied 850 of those studies, including their assessment results, formulated by the applicants, the producers. This is, to put it mildly, a scandal. At the moment, a readmission of glyphosate is not acceptable. There is still the pending danger of cancer risk. All the existing studies, all the existing knowledge was used and analysed for our assessment, really everything. We checked all evidence and now we know the result. Glyphosate is not causing cancer. Ariane Fehler is a Saluki dog breeder in rural northern Germany. After chatting with a neighbour, she learned that the farmer was treating his plants with a weed killer Roundup. That's Manoush, suffering from cancer, and it's not an isolated case. Failer started her Saluki breeding in 92. Ten years after having moved to the countryside, the cancer-triggered death rate rose sharply. So far, 12 of her dogs have passed from cancer. There's just 10 metres between the property line and the enclosure for my dogs. It's unavoidable that the wind carries glyphosate to us. We can't do anything. She was operated on on the lower milk line to remove tumours, but they came back. You can see them here. Four tumours on the same milk line. It's not always as it seems to be. Saluki dogs are known to suffer from high cancer rates. On the other hand, Aryan failure traced the bloodline of all their Salukis back to 1920 and stresses that there was no cancer cluster before she moved here. She strongly feels that glyphosate should stop being used for commercial purposes. When everything follows nature's rhythm, birth and death are both part of normal life. Somehow dying's okay then. But early death triggered by glyphosate, it's not okay. I still remember the death of Buschor. He was stretched out, his snout was covered with saliva and blood. The vet worked on him with a cardiac massage and I did a mouth-to-muzzle blowing. I tried to get him back to life. Then he cried out and last time he was dead. He hadn't even reached the age of two. We don't have the right to poison their lives.